Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm going to get started. My name is Gaurav. Uh, I'm a group program manager in the Azure Purview team. Uh, I don't know how many of you were in the previous session that we talked about uh, unified data governance with Azure Purview. Can I see? Was there anyone in that session? Great. So what I'm going to be doing is talking about a specific use case here, which is around the self-service access provisioning. And I mentioned in the last session that we have announced uh, the public preview of this workflow capability in Azure Purview. <clears throat> and the goal for today's session in terms of agenda is to talk about what is the scenario that we are targeting with self-service access. Uh, I'll talk about the goals from a workflow perspective as a capability in Azure Purview, what are our goals. Then we look at those capabilities that we have released in uh, public preview for Azure Purview workflow. And then in the end, we'll look at the self-service access piece and look at a quick demo of that. So very quickly, uh, this is just a, a placeholder slide as a carryover from the last session on what Azure Purview is in terms of the platform and the applications on top. And the workflow capability is part of our Purview data catalog application. Now, in terms of the scenario, you can imagine that today you have data spread all over, whether it is Oracle, SQL, uh, SQL storage, Teradata instances, and a lot of times you need data from these different places in order to do some intelligent analysis, right? Whether data scientists or data analysts need it. And the biggest thing in an organization today is to actually get access to that data. Right? Because you have to, uh, there are manual, ad hoc, bespoke processes around who, finding out who is the owner of that data set, uh, data set, trying to find that owner, getting that access so that you can start to use that data in your analytical processes. So the use case around this is self-service data access, which means now that you're able to discover that information in the purview catalog, how you can use right from the Purview Catalog request access, uh, and you'll see that there are different use cases in terms of that as well. So our goals are threefold here. The first is that as you discover information in Purview Catalog, you should be able to request access. Then second, as an owner of that data, you should be able to grant access to that data set. And finally, you should be able to audit and track all those data access requests, right? Because again, today all of this is done in Excel or with some manual processes in most of the organizations. So we have released this capability in uh, Azure Purview. We call this uh, Azure Purview Workflow. It is in public preview as of yesterday. And it has some of the key uh, things around how we are enabling templates out of the box for certain workflows. And today's, the, this particular session is about self-service data access. But as I mentioned in my last session as well, there is also a workflow that you can use to create business terms. So imagine you wanted to create a new business term in your glossary. And again, you wanted to go through an approval process because you don't want anyone in your organization to be creating business terms. So if someone creates it, it triggers an approval workflow to the owner to approve it before that business term takes effect. Then, like, uh, there are out-of-the-box templates and then workflow as a capability where, again, you want to create customized workflows in your organization to at attach it to your data curation processes. Uh, then in terms of integration with policy, so as I mentioned that we are coming up with uh, another applications on top of platform, and one of the key pieces there is around policy, where you'll be able to define uh, policies like give access to everyone, all FTEs in my organization on any data in storage, right? So you could define English level statements like this, and here, the integration of self-service access workflow with policy is that for uh, storage, starting with storage and eventually with any Azure RP, once you request access, if you have the correct policy defined, and if it is, let's say it is auto-approved, 
then we'll be go, able to go all the way to granting the actual access to the data, right? So you can think of that for native sources in Azure. But then if you think about the third party sources like Oracle, Teradata, where you can still request access as you discover them in the purview catalog, but because we don't have control over those systems, so you'll request access, it will trigger a uh, uh, approval workflow email to the owner of that Oracle asset, and then he or she has to go find the correct administrator, grant the person access, and then come back to purview from a tracking and auditing perspective. So from a bookkeeping perspective, you'll still be able to use purview for the entire data estate. We'll go a little farther for the sources that are in Azure where we have direct line of sight, where we can define policies, allow you to define policies to grant the actual access. And then for all the third party sources, you'll be able to use it for bookkeeping. Okay. Now, if you look at our competitors, right, pure play competitors like Colibra Elation, the only thing they support is bookkeeping. But here, we are going farther for Azure sources in terms of granting the actual access based on the policies that you have defined in your organization. Okay. So if I were to just take the example of self-service access workflow, Right, so you can look at it uh, in terms of how that works. Again, as I mentioned in my last session, underneath the hoods, we are using Power Automate as a workflow engine. So let's say someone finds some data set in the uh, purview catalog, they request access. If the approval is met, they are, they'll be granted. If, if it is not met, it will be a rejection email. If it is met, then it will trigger an email. Someone has to go approve it or they, ca they can come directly to purview in the management center and approve the access. If yes, the person gets access. If they deny it, then they'll get a rejection email. Okay, so let's quickly see this in action on what this means. So here I'm, I'm, uh, I've opened up a Azure uh, blob container where you can see that I currently don't have access to this. This basically, when I try to access this finance fraud data container, it is telling me that I don't have access to that, okay? So now if I go in my purview catalog, and I've already searched for it, so it is showing up in my recently accessed items. So if I go to finance fraud data, now with this new capability around self-service uh, access provisioning, against each data set, you'll see a request access button. So if I click request access, I'll see this uh, tab on the right and I can say need access to data set for analyzing. Okay. And I can send this. And once you trigger this particular request, behind the scenes it has created a data access request um, and it is being submitted for, to the owner and awaiting approval. So now, if you go in the management center in your purview, and if you go to request and approvals, you'll see that there is a pending request that just came in across, uh, for the access that I, I just requested to finance fraud data, right? And here you can define owners, you can say who is able to approve, like in this case, it's me and one of my coworker, and we have said that if either or one of us approves it, or we could say both of us have to approve it. So all those conditions are available for you, right? So if I close this and I can go here and say, I'm going to actually approve this particular one, right? So in this particular case, what's happening is that request got approved and behind the scenes, there's actually already a policy. Now, this is the policy section uh, that we have enabled and there's a self-service access policy over here. You can see that there is a self-service access policy that was automatically created and you, uh, the person who requested access got approved to access that finance fraud data container because we have created this self-service access policy to approve anyone in our organization. 
So now if I go back and I refresh this, I can see that now I can see that particular file because I was able to create a workflow, request, request access, a workflow got created, the administrator to that particular data set approved it, and now I have access to this particular data set. Right? So again, this is very key because today in the organizations, this is a manual ad hoc process, but now with Azure Purview workflow capabilities and specifically the self-service access workflow, you're able to request access and in this case, this is Azure storage, so we go all the way to granting the access, and we're going to expand this natively to all Azure sources. We are beginning with Azure storage, but now if I look at, uh, I, as I mentioned, it is available for your entire data estate, which means that if I go here now, and this is a, a, a SAP HANA table, and I still see request access here, right? So if I click request access, I can still say, grant access for analyzing data. And in this case, when I send, now for this one, it will be used from a bookkeeping standpoint, where again, it will trigger an email to the owner. So you can see that I might be, yeah, I'm already getting emails for approving or rejecting this in my email box. So the owner will get an email, they can approve right from here as well. So all of those capabilities are lit up. Now in this case, like I've requested access, if I again go to the management center and look at requests and approvals, I can see that there's a pending request for uh, the SAP HANA table that I requested access. And again, I can go and look at uh, who can approve or reject this. And if I go here, now I can start uh, this and say, yeah, this is approved. So in this case, like I'm using it from a bookkeeping perspective, but behind the scenes, I have to go contact the administrator, grant the access to make sure. But from an auditing and tracking perspective, all of that information is available here in terms of what uh, request was approved by whom to what container or a particular table in your data state uh, by anyone. So. This is in public preview today for you guys to, uh, you and the customers to try it out and give us feedback. And as I mentioned that in terms of what we are doing next with this is we're gonna expand it to go all the way for all Azure sources. And then for your entire data state, it is available today from a bookkeeping standpoint uh, in, in Azure Purview. So if I would go back Yeah, so this was a demo I wanted to show. Uh, if there are any questions, feel free to ask uh, in this. And uh, yeah. Because we have some in the chat. Sure. Okay, the first question is, um, uh, you mentioned about automate behind workflows. Is there any additional automate license to use workflow or is it bundled together? It's bundled together. Question oh, sorry. So the question is that, if we were to use workflow capability, do we have to buy a Power Automate license or is it bundled together? The answer to that is it will be bundled together. We are still working on the business model of this because this is in public preview right now. We're looking to get your feedback, so it's right now free. But as we work towards GAing this capability, we'll come up with the corresponding business model on how we're going to charge you. And as we determine, we'll let you guys know and get your feedback as well. But as of today, this capability is available in public preview for you guys to try it out, and you do not need to have any Power Automate license over there. Now, one thing that I uh, sh wanted to show you as well is that you, you can actually go to the authoring tab and look at the workflow that was created, right? So in this case, this is a data access request workflow. So it is just the same picture that I showed you in the deck, which is the Power Automate uh, thing. And you can change this. So this is by default template that we enable for you to use it. But if you want to change it, add new more stuff, because it's fully configurable, you're able to do that. That as well. Okay. The next question um, is um, how would this work with SQL Server, SQL authentication, or Azure SQL, where AD authentication is not enabled? 
Yeah, so the question is that how will this work with SQL where AD authentication is not available and SQL authentication is? So the answer to that question is today we do support SQL authentication in terms of scanning. Once that SQL server is supported as part of the workflow capability, we will enable all those authentication mechanisms as well for you to use as part of the workflow capability. Is it possible to have? Okay. So great question. So the question is, is it possible to have a time box access? This is, we have gotten this feedback so far by a lot of customers to say that I want to approve, but I only want to approve it for 30 days. So we are working on enabling a policy because remember how this ties down together is to the policy that you have defined in our uh, policy pieces like the one that I showed you here. So we are working on enabling that not only you're able to define that I want to grant access, but also with a qualifier to say that I want to grant access for only next 90 days. So yes, that capability is in progress, work in progress. Yeah. Yes, you can do that. We have actually enabled. Uh, so the question is, can you enable a, a separate action, right? A customized action uh, as part of this workflow? Yes, we have enabled a task action, which will allow you to do that. And also we are working on enabling the script part of it as well. So today, if you know Power Automate, you can uh, write your own uh, scripts in there, you know, customize it as as much as you can. So all of that capability is also getting enabled as part of this workflow capability in purview. Okay. Um, then a question from my side. Um, what happens about things like role level security? So for example, if you want to push that down just for a specific region or something like this. Yeah. Yes, so again, this, the question is that if you were to do this for row level security or push down to a particular region, is that possible? Yes, it will be possible. Again, it goes back to the policy pieces. Remember, the workflow is what you're defining for data curation exercise, but ultimately, what is controlling access is the policy that you are defining. So yes, in the policy, you'll be able to define English-like statements like give access to Gaurav Malhotra on all PII data before 9 a.m., right? So it's a very descriptive language that we are coming up with where you can define, and based on that, you'll be able to control access. Yeah, so we're going to start with the tabular one and expand it to the multidimensional one. So it's going to come in click stops, but ultimately both will be available. So that's all from online. Okay, any questions here? Yep. Yeah. What was the question, sorry? Yes. Yes, you can. So basically, yeah, so the question is, is an overview of all the permissions that have been given and can you revoke that? So the answer is yes. So as you can see over here that let's just take self-service access policy as an example. So once this has been granted access, you can come here and actually delete it as well, right? So it's still being uh, deployed for certain pieces and hence you don't see it, but you'll be able to delete it, which means that it will revoke that particular access and essentially stop those customers who had uh, in your organization to people who were enabled for access, they won't be able. So you are able to do both. Uh, does it answer your question? Mm -hmm. So the question is that what, what 
if you want to remove a certain uh, number of people and not revoke the entire policy. So, it, so there are different types of mechanisms on how you can grant people access, right? So, so far, you've been used to what we call as role-based access control, where you define roles and you put people in the roles and you grant access based on that. And then what we are coming up right now is what we call as attribute-based access control, where you're controlling access based on the attribute of the data. So here in the statement that I gave, give access to Gaurav Malhotra on all PII data, the attribute is PII and you're trying to control access. So both are available for you to use, right? So you could use role-based access control or ABAC, attribute-based access control, and based on that, accomplish uh, your use case. I've been told it's time uh, now, so thank you so much for giving me an opportunity to present. So if there are any other questions, I can stay back and answer those. Right. Thank you.